Chapter 10, Good Vibes and Bad Vibes. Now when you say vibes, what are we talking about exactly? What's the definition of vibes in this particular scenario? Looks like it's going to be another hot one. You're telling me. You know, I feel like we haven't really hung out lately. I know, and it's not because we've been fighting this time. Really? We've been hanging out all the time. We're kind of stuck here together. No, silly! You haven't been eating lunch with us! Oh! You're right. I'm sorry. It's fine, but let's make sure we remedy that, okay? I won't let you forget about me in light of your new boyfriend. I promise I won't. How are things going, by the way? It feels like you got together with Doug so fast and out of nowhere. It really does. This whole band camp has been a whirlwind of events. Are you getting to know him better? Definitely. He's really fun to be with, and our relationship feels so... natural. I feel like I've known him much longer than I actually have. Maybe because he's such an open book. And he's so casual about pet names and holding my hand. He's really affectionate. I trail off, blushing and feeling a bit giddy as I list all of Doug's positive qualities. Aw, you're making me jealous. I wish Eugene was a little more affectionate. I'm gonna go find him. Have fun with your boyfriend! Speaking of my boyfriend, where is he? Whoa, hello. What day is it? <laughs> that is a tight outfit. Oh my god! Huh? Doug, you look... <laughs> what? what is this? What? My old middle school jersey? I wore it for school spirit day. First off, today is hero day. And second, what were you thinking? My bad. Oh... I guess I could go change. I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> I can't! <laughs> I take off running. I can hear a commotion break out behind me as I leave the field behind. Dog! Oh, boy. What in the name of all that is holy are you wearing? Get changed! Now you're going to be late for practice! I am so sick of buttheads. If you kids can't show up to practice on time dressed appropriately, then I'm canceling Spirit Week. Once I'm far enough away, I let it all out. <laughs> yeah? Who did I upset? S sounds like a... Donkey having a seizure. Oh. Oops, someone is back here, sitting on the ground in the shade of a potty. Marion? Aw, what are you wearing? Are you wearing a cape for Hero Day? I love your cape, it's cool. <laughs> oh, I should have known it was you. I guess I just look like the kind of girl that would have the laugh of a seizure-prone beast of burden. Yeah, you know, while you've ruined this girl's life, <laughs> you know? But hey, no biggie. Hey, you're wearing a trash bag for a cape too. We had the same idea. I flap my trash bag cape in the breeze in an effort to distract Marion from her tears, but she doesn't look amused. <laughs> trash. Marion, no! I'm the trash. I'm trash. Huh? Why do you say that? I lost the pit instruments. I'm the pit captain. They call me mom. I'm supposed to take care of them, but now they're all suffering because of me. Marion, you're not the one who lost the pit instruments. Ugh. Yes, I am. I decided we should break for lunch. I left them unattended. They're gone because of me. They're gone because... I swallow my words. Be 
because of whoever hit them. It's not your fault. <laughs> she sniffles and doesn't say anything. I can tell she doesn't believe me. And why would she when you're lying to her? Here, I offer her my hand. What? Instead of being trash all alone over here, why don't you come be trash with the rest of the band? Okay. She takes my hand and I help her up. Together, with our trash bag capes flapping in the breeze, we return to the field with our heads held high. There you are. Cadence, begin stretches. Marion, I want to speak with you. You do? Yes. I believe I have finally found a purpose for my useless pet. Marion cringes next to me. I give her a swift pat on the shoulder, then leave to do my duty. I'm worried. It isn't long until we find out the assignment Mr. Wiley has bestowed on the pit kids. Guess what, everyone? The pit have now become water children! Water children? Correct! The pit will move about during our rehearsal, making sure everyone is staying hydrated. That way, we won't have to take breaks! What? Isn't that a great idea? I thought so. Uh... Mr. Wiley, we're not getting breaks anymore? How do you expect us to function? Well... I suppose it is a good idea in theory, but in the long run it could become detrimental to our... All right. I knew you all would agree with me. We're making use of every minute. Now let's get to work! Our protests don't seem to reach Mr. Wiley's ears. Whining turns into muttered complaints as we're forced to turn our attention to learning drill. Mm. <laughs> this is my life. I'm a water child. This is my life now. It's better than jogging around the field countless times, right? She neither agrees nor disagrees. She's still kind of jogging, it's just not constant. Ugh! I'm tired! I hate this! <laughs> What's up with Mr. Wiley's creepy attitude? I think I liked it better when he was angry. Hey, Marion, won't you be a dear and bring me a water? Oof, I'm thirsty. Bring me one, too. I'm thirsty as hell. Ugh! Let's go! Everyone on the field needs to shut it! We're trying to get stuff done! Maybe I should try talking to Mr. Wiley. Sir, a word, please? Not now, Cadence. This is a difficult set, and I want to make sure we get it right, lest someone gets hurt. A number of rookies are in danger of losing teeth to the guards' rifles. It'll only take a minute. Fine! What? I flinch. Um, don't you think no breaks is a little harsh? The band is going to become run down. Our work ethic might suffer if we're too tired. This isn't the army. So long as we have enough water in our tanks, we're going to be just fine. Now get up on your podium where you belong! But- No buts! Go! Mr. Wiley's never spoken to me like that. I feel like I'm one of the troublemakers. I don't deserve this. You probably deserve more than that, honestly. Then again, after what happened to the pit instruments, I do deserve it. Yep. And more. I drag my feet back to the podium. Jerk. At least you tried. Marion is relaxing in the sparse shade my podium provides. Mr. Wiley snapping at me really got to me. It's hard to do my job with much enthusiasm after that. <laughs> oh no, not Cornelius. Cornelius, does this look like a curve to you? No! It's a line! So conform to it! I know, I know! If you know, then do it already! Cornelius. His parents must have hated him when he was born. I almost snicker. <sighs> Freshmen. The stench of burning freshmen is in the air. Perhaps I should put a few of the water children on sunscreen duty. Marion's snarky commentary is what gets me through this practice, honestly. <laughs> Until suddenly... Dog! Holy for holies, you just about killed me! 
Didn't you see me standing there? Uh... It's kinda hard to see around the space drum, but vision is overrated anyway, right? No! No, it is not, Douglas! Vision is very important! It's just Doug. Fine. Do you want to know why you made Drumline this year? Just Doug? You want to know why? Uh... Because you're the only one who can carry bass five! I assume it's a heavy drum? The biggest bass drum in the drum line and Doug's weapon, a uh, instrument of choice. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh. So don't go getting a big head and thinking everyone is going to get out of your way just because you're on the biggest bass drum. You know what? Something has been boggling my mind for a while now. If I'm carrying bass five, and there are only four bass drums in the band, what happened to the last drum? I'm impressed you know what boggling means to use it in a sentence, Doug. And you don't want to know what happened to the last drum. Mr. Wiley is right. Doug needs to be more careful. Or else, Death by Doug. Death by Doug. That sounds like a band name. Or an ice cream flavor. It kind of does, doesn't it? I bet you'd like a taste of that ice cream, wouldn't you? Damn, she got me! Oh, damn, Caden's got her! Woo! Pew, 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 pew! You already tasted that ice cream, so you can tell me how it was. Jeez. <laughs> I can't believe... I can't believe... Y you Okay, I deserve that. Hi! Marion! I'm thirsty. Can you bring me some more water? Ugh. I'm serious. Sibling's side is in my future. She leaves to do her job, and we slog our way through the rest of practice. Sheesh. This root. Time for lunch. Oh, it's Aaron. I don't know why, but I find him a little bit intimidating. He is a little bit intimidating. Maybe it's because I've gotten to know him over these past few days. Or maybe it's because I realize that I haven't gotten to know him at all, despite being around him more. Hey, Aaron. You look like you're deep in thought. Eh. I'm a bit confused. About what? Sabrina asked me out yesterday, but she was obviously pretending to be Marion. So I'm not sure if it was serious. Damn. Poor Aaron. <laughs> He's like... Do I approach Sabrina about this? Was she trying to prank me? Do I shoot my shot anyway? Good old Aaron. Oh, really? Jeez, just how many people did Sabrina ask out? I'm not interested. Pretty poor attempt at a prank. Either way, I'm not interested. I'm going to practice my drums. You're not eating lunch today? He leaves without replying. Yeesh. Whatever. I was gonna eat with Susie and the others today anyways. <laughs> Poor Aaron. Here we are. Doug and I take our seats. Hiya. Oh, they're back. <laughs> it's the happy couple. Hey. Cadence, we missed you. How's life with the walking beefcake? Huh? Who's the walking beefcake? <laughs> Hey, you are, sweetie. She leans across the table and starts feeling up Doug's bicep. Oh god, why do I have to deal with you again? Mm. Ooh, Peter, his are way bigger than yours. <sighs> Peter, just dump her butt. I know you, you don't have to get together with Cadence, but just, like, just move on with your life, man. You're better than this. Ugh. What does she think she's doing? Flirting with anything that moves. Nope, we're not. Doug is obviously uncomfortable, okay? We're not going to ignore this. Let's get out of here. Excuse me, don't you have a boyfriend? Leave mine be. 
I shoo her hands away, then loop my arm through Doug's. Getting a little overprotective, aren't we? I'm not. Just keep your hands to yourself, like we learned in elementary school. Haha, <laughs> get her. It's fine, it's fine. I think it's adorable. She drops the issue. I glare at her and squeeze Doug's toned bicep a bit tighter. That's right, you better leave my boyfriend be. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Doug sigh with relief. I got you, boo. So, how are things in the drumline, Doug? It's awesome! They're great! We memorize all our music and everything. Woohoo! Wow, that's amazing! Isn't it? I hope the rest of the band follows their lead. Too bad. It's too bad about what happened to the pit. Who do you guys think took the instruments? Oh no, why do we have to have this conversation? My mind rushes to make something up and distract everyone. No idea! Oh, but did you hear some rookies got hazed last night in the craziest way? Hey, I never forced them to sleep on the roof of the lodge. In fact, I tried to convince them not to, but they had their minds set on it. They hazed themselves. Wait, what? Oh no! You better not let Mr. Wiley find out there are kids sleeping on the roof! <laughs> eh, it's in the past now. He's got bigger fish to fry. Yeah, like the fish that hid his instruments in the lake. <laughs> After lunch, Doug goes to toss the football with the drumline. He invites me to play, but I'm pretty tired. I decide to watch from afar, keeping my gaze trained on Doug. He's actually really good. He never misses a catch, and his throws always go straight to their target. Drum and drummer flee in terror each time Doug comes barreling at them for a tackle. Doug clearly played football in the past. His tiny jersey says it all. But why did he stop? Why be in the failing band program when you could be part of the beloved football team? It's a good question. If he's good at it, too. Before practice, I swing by my room to grab my pack. <laughs> Alex, what are you doing? Alex? You look like you're up to no good. Sup? So oh, Cadence. I guess I can tell you what I'm planning, since you witnessed it for yourself yesterday. What are you talking about? Didn't you see Marion run away from me at the end of practice when I brought up our date? She was so embarrassed. She must be super into me. Um, I don't think... I'm gonna try talking to her again, but this time I'll be careful not to scare her off. She's shy, but I'm up for the challenge. Alex, that wasn't... So, I thought of the perfect way to approach her. He whips out his sheet music for the show, ripping it in half in one clean motion. I'm gonna tell her I lost my music and I need her to replace it. It's the perfect conversation starter and she won't be able to run away this time. Isn't it a great idea? <laughs> I don't know what to say to this kid. I feel like he's gonna do it, regardless. I'm gonna try to save Marion. <laughs> Alex, I love you. You're you're great, um, but you're slightly delulu. I don't think now is the best time to approach Marion with this. Just saying. Shut up! It's the worst idea I've ever heard. You wouldn't know a good idea if it came up and tried to sell you insurance. What? Yep. Alex charges off determinedly, eyes shining with confidence. Little does he know, he's playing with fire and about to get severely burned. Should I have stopped him? I I took I literally took the only option that may have allowed us to stop him, and it didn't work. Meh. <laughs> I'm sure nothing bad will happen to Alex. It's a full rehearsal today, minus the pit. They're banished to the back of the room to organize pep band sheet music. We get through rehearsal without any incidents, but tension buzzes in the air. I can tell everyone is eager to put some distance between themselves and Mr. Wiley. 
In the last minute of practice, right when we're all ready to flee to the safety of a break, it happens. Section leaders, we're having a meeting here in ten minutes. Huh? Since when? Since now. Be there. Really? You really need to tell us these things in advance. Well, I'll be darned if I'm not sorry for taking up the great Peter Dong's precious time! What do you even do in your free time? Stare into a mirror and tell yourself how pretty you are? Hmm. He's not wrong, you know. I like that Wiley ad admits that Peter is pretty. Whatever. Shut up. This meeting is mandatory. Be there or face the consequences. I remain at the podium and watch the room empty out. I catch Doug's eye as he passes me. I wish he could stay, but he's not a section leader. Well, this sucks. Let's get this over with. Yes, please. Here he comes. Hey, Mr. Wiley, what is this about? It better not be another briefing on how to be a good leader or whatever. No, no. We are past that point. There are much more important issues at hand. Sir. More important than being a responsible leader. I called you here because I want to speak to you about the pit instruments. Really? I want you to give me names. Wh what? An entire pit section doesn't just go missing. Someone in this band is to blame. Even if you don't know who it is. I want you to name the person you find the most suspicious in the band and leave the rest to me. Sir. Don't you think you're grasping at straws, sir? <sighs> Hark. I mean, it's, it's bad when even Clark's like, uh, I don't know about this. Do you have any better ideas, Clark? If so, I would love to hear them. No. I volunteer my brother. Kid was born suspicious. In fact, I'm not even really sure he's my brother. Peter, I know you're joking, but this is n literally not the time. Do you think this is some kind of joke? Because it's not. I am dead. 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 Serious. <laughs> now start giving me names. If any of us had names, we would have come to you already. You don't think anyone in the drumline could have done it, do you, Aaron? No way. If they did, they'd have me to deal with. I don't think you kids get it. This meeting isn't over until I have a list of names! Mr. Wiley, you can't force us to... Cadence has volunteered to go first. Huh? Huh? Tell us, who do you think stole the missing pit instruments? I can feel everyone looking at me. There's no getting out of this. I can't tell him the truth, but perhaps I could lead him astray. What the frick? This is ridiculous. <laughs> what, where's the option to just, like, not say anything? Um, he'll never believe it's Bandit. I'm not throwing Samuel under the bus. <laughs> I could throw Clark under the bus. Mi yeah, Mr. Wiley, definitely. Mr. Wiley is waiting. I have to give him a name. No, just don't say any- don't play this game. This is ridiculous. What are my other options? <sighs> okay. My thought process. He won't believe me. Samuel doesn't deserve it. I'll come back to Doug. Um, he will just, like, snap and tell me to pick again. Aaron also does not deserve it. Clark doesn't deserve it in this case. But for Doug, I'm like... The way, because she screams it, I feel like it's like a panic. And he won't believe her. <laughs> I feel like we need to take responsibility at this point, basically. I'm just like, 
This is ridiculous. He's literally like trying to get people to give him false information just to like blame somebody. We should at least take responsibility. I wish I could just say it was me at this point. Uh, I can always reload if something goes wrong, but I, I feel like putting it on anybody else is not, not right. It's just not right. Maybe it's not the correct, maybe there's somebody in here that is correct, but, you know, like, the, the correct choice. But I would feel better picking Doug. I would feel much better if I could pick myself, but Doug's the only one that I've got. I've got a genius idea, okay? Doug! Doug? Really? That guy is way too nice. He acts so innocent, but I bet it's just that. An act. There's no way he's not secretly an evil mastermind hell-bent on destroying this marching band from the inside out. Don't worry, Mr. Wiley. I'm going to get closer to him so I can find out the truth. Alright. You do that. Okay. Told the truth and misdirected. Perfect. Olive, got any names for me? Score! Looks like I got a suspicion off of Doug. <laughs> just admit to it at this point! Stop! Please, I just want you to admit to it. That was some good acting on my part. I can act the role of a dimwit really well. Some might say it's not even acting. Mm-hmm. The meeting lasts about half an hour. Some kids just randomly pick names, and I think Mr. Wiley can sense that they aren't taking this as seriously as they should. He calls it off and lets us leave for dinner. Enjoy yourselves. In the meantime, I'm going to have a word with those we spoke of today. Gulp. Well, we might have thrown Doug under the bus. I take my time packing up my stuff. As I'm leaving, I hear Alex's voice carrying from the locker room. I'm sorry! I'm really sorry! He comes fleeing into the band room like a scared rabbit. Marion follows him at a slower pace, eyes sharp as daggers. I told you it was a bad idea. How did you manage to lose all of your music? And you already lost it once. I have no more copies to give you. I'll have to go to Mr. Wiley. Do you have any idea what I'll have to deal with? What I've been dealing with? I'll make it up to you. Ugh! You can make it up to me by getting out of my sight! Yes, ma'am! Alex scurries from the room, metaphoric tail tucked between his legs. I think I can see a vein throbbing at Marion's temple. I quickly make my way over to calm her. Marion, you don't have to go to Mr. Wiley over this. Alex didn't lose his music. He didn't? Why would he lie about that? Uh, he used it as an excuse to talk to you. He thought you were interested in him. Ugh! Sabrina! A stream of profanity I didn't think Marion was capable of explodes from her lips in short bursts. I wait until she gets it all out of her system before speaking again. Yeah, so don't let it get to you. I'll tell Alex to use the music he ripped in half. This doesn't have to be your problem. She sighs, shoulders slumping, and rubs her brow with one finger. <sighs> Thanks, Cadence. It seems like everyone is trying to make my life miserable these days. Except you, thankfully. Oh, the guilt! Stabity stab stab! I'm trying to take responsibility, but the game will not let me marry him. Oh, if she only knew that I was half the cause of her misery! I know it's tough, but try telling yourself that one day, these are funny memories that you'll look back on and laugh at. That came straight from the mouth of Doug, didn't it? Uh, Freshman. Today, some dweeb freshman ripped up his music so that he could hit on me. The corner of her lip quirks. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's funny. Ugh, I can't wait to graduate and start dating mature college guys. Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'd better go track down Doug. Have fun. But not too much fun. 
Yeah. I'll hey. do that. Hey, I threw you under the bus today. <laughs> I, I was try. I wanted to do me. I don't know if Wiley talked to you. He probably didn't. He's probably just rolling his eyes at Cadence. Ay, ay, ay. Dinner time with my sugar sweet red velvet. <laughs> You're the one who's sugar sweet. It's pretty nice out. Would you like to eat out here, Doug? Just you and me? His eyes light up. Really? Of course! I don't need Felicity molesting you, and I don't have the energy to deal with the drumline. This is my favorite time of day, when the sun starts to set and the landscape gets this warm yellow glow, and the shadows get longer and longer until they fade away and it's completely dark. Aw, Doug! That was surprisingly poetic coming from you. You think so? I guess I have my moments. You should try your hand at writing. No way. English is one of my worst subjects. In fact, they're all my worst subjects except for Fizz Ed. Really? Yeah. What's your favorite subject? Other than band. <sighs> I think he'll like all of them no matter what, but I feel we'll bond the most over lunch. That's a subject? Okay, then that's officially my favorite subject, too! Doug and I enjoy each other's company, reveling in the peaceful outdoors until it's time to go to practice. Hey. Alex, what happened to your music? I taped it up. It's fine. But why was it ripped down the middle like that? Does it matter?! Nope, not really. During practice, I always keep one ear aimed towards the drumline to hear whatever is going on with them. There's never a dull moment. Listen, when I hit my bass drum like this, it says my name. Doug! 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 It's talking to me! Yeah? Doug, when you say things like that, I question whether or not you're high as a kite. Man, wish I could be as high as Doug all the time. <laughs> I'm high on life! <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh! Nothing! I forgot about her tendency to hang out near my podium. You're thinking about Mr. Hickey, aren't you? How are things going with him? Mr. Hickey? I'd say they're going really well, actually. I'm getting to know Doug a little better each day. Not my tempo! You're all moving like slugs. Line up, we're going to do some jazz runs. Four to eight. That should wake you up. A unique marching technique for covering great distances with long strides at a fast speed. Ah, I see. Ugh. What? Think about your future cadence. Do you really want your name to be Mrs. Hickey when you're older? You really want to be married to an ice cream truck driver? Wait, his last name is literally Hickey? Doug Hickey? I mean, that, okay, something to consider. <laughs> but the ice cream truck driver, he's probably not gonna be an ice cream truck driver for the rest of his life. And even if he was, somebody's gotta do that job. Whatever, if he's happy, if he's making enough to make a living, power to him, I don't care. That's only his part-time job. He's not going to be driving an ice cream truck for the rest of his life. If you want to take that gamble, be my guest. But last I spoke to Doug about his job, he said he was really excited to go full-time so he could hand out ice cream in the winter, too. Faster! Longer strides! You need to be able to do this in Mercury! One, two, three, four! One, two, three, four! Marion... Is this by chance what you told yourself to justify breaking up with Doug? No. Watch out! Ouch! Doug? Eugene! My baritone! Doug! Holy moly! Douglas, what did I tell you about watching where you're going? Uh-oh. Looks like we have a man down. Looks like my boyfriend killed Susie's boyfriend. 
I quickly climb down from the podium and run to Susie's side. She's standing over Eugene, who lies on his back, eyelids fluttering weakly. It doesn't look good. Come on, Eugene! Get up! Shake it off! Sir, I think we should get him to the infirmary. We haven't... I mean, yes! Of course! I'll take him. Eugene, can you stand? Here, lean on me! Who's running the infirmary? <laughs> like, okay, do we just have a, a room, but no nurse? Doug struggles to peer around his giant bass drum. Is Eunice okay? It's Eugene, you moron! And why don't you watch where you're going? Whoa, Susie, there's no need for that. I'm sorry, Cadence, but it's true. Doug is a menace with that drum. Let's go, Eugene. She and Eugene slowly make their way off the field, taking small steps. Eugene looks about ready to collapse again, and I can see a large bruise forming on his lips where his mouth struck his instrument in the midst of the blow. Ow! Doug calls after them. I'm really, really sorry! You can stuff your sorries in a sack, mister! First the pet instruments. Now Eugene. What am I going to do? The parents and the school. What are they going to say about all this? Doug? Yeah? I'm not happy. Ugh. Looks like Death by Doug has come to pass after all. And it looks like Death by Aaron is next on the list. Alright! Enough chit-chat! Back to your places! We're doing these until every single one of you gets this perfect! We're going to be here all night, then. If that's what it takes. Cadence? Yes? Go retrieve Susie. I don't want any more unnecessary holes in the drill. Uh, okay. I hurry to catch up with Susie. Susie, you have to come back to rehearsal. I have to take care of Eugene! Sorry, but Mr. Wiley ordered it. He said he doesn't want any more holes in the drill. Susie gives me a venomous look, clearly wanting to argue. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. Fine, I'm coming. Eugene, I promise I'll come check on you as soon as practice is over. We make no more progress on the show tonight. Mr. Wiley runs everyone into the ground with practicing their steps until every band member is slick with sweat. The pet and I look on, feeling rather guilty that we get a free pass. When we finally break, 30 minutes past the end of practice, half of the band flops over on the sidelines, too weak to grab water. That was hard to watch. Are you okay, Doug? Phew. I'm beat. He slides off his bass drum with agonizing slowness. Ugh. You smell horrible. Thought you said you liked it when I get all sweaty like this. Ugh! Yep. Call her out. Uh... She really hates me. I don't know what I did wrong. Oh, I don't think she hates you as much as you think. It's more like she's trying to convince herself she hates you so that she's not still interested in you. Once Doug is recovered, we set off for our temporary home. To my surprise, he slips his hand into mine and holds it until we're in front of my door. See you tomorrow, Doug. Get some rest. Sweet dreams. My favorite tater tot. Amazing how the words tater tot can make my heart leap. Hi. Oh, Susie, you're here. How is Eugene? He'll survive. But he's not going to be coming to practice for the next few days, thanks to that big oaf. Um, that big oaf is my boyfriend. And? Well, with the way you were talking about him, it seemed like you had forgotten. Or like you're trying to provoke something. Can you blame me after what he did to my boyfriend? It's not like he did it on purpose. It was an accident. It's pretty hard to see around that bass drum. Hmm. Besides, he might not be the only one at fault. What's that supposed to mean? Maybe Eugene wasn't in the right spot. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm hearing. 
You're blaming this on Eugene? There's no way he would miss his mark. He's the best marcher in the band. That's debatable, I'm sure. Especially if he's getting run over by bass drummers. I can't keep the contempt out of my voice. Oh, this sucks. Well, Doug is the worst marcher in the band and everyone knows it. That's not true. He works really hard and he felt really bad about what happened to Eugene. Seriously? He didn't even get his name right. Ugh, I can't even look at you right now. Susie whips open her suitcase and begins stuffing clothes into it. Damn, she wasn't even this mad at us when we were on Peter's route. What are you doing? I'm going to spend the night in the infirmary with Eugene. Maybe you should go spend the night with Doug since you seem to think he can do no wrong. She snaps the suitcase shut and heads for the exit. I never said... This is such a dumb fight. It's literally the dumbest thing. It's not Cadence's fault. <laughs> it was an accident. Okay, but I mean, I, like, tensions are high because everyone is freaking exhausted because Wiley is a slave driver doing weird shenanigans. Uh, so everybody's stretched a little thin. It sucks. Susie slams the door before I can get another word out. Wow. Whatever. Maybe I was harsh, but she provoked me first. Doesn't make it right. I couldn't just sit back and let her insult Doug like that. True, but you could have not been so contemptible towards Eugene. The name she called him leave a fire burning in my belly. He didn't deserve that. Doug may be clumsy, but he never would have hurt Eugene on purpose, and he was genuinely concerned about him after running him over. I violently tear back the covers on my bed and climb underneath them. For a long time, I can't sleep. My head pounds with rage. But eventually, fatigue does win over, and I drift into an uneasy rest. 